that sound right there is the sound of a crankcase vent valve gone valid on an N51 engine. Uh, this engine is, this engine right here is uh, an N51, but N52, N52 KP is also a BMW naturally aspirated six cylinder that has a valve cover with a built-in crankcase ventilation valve. Now the car that we're going to be demonstrating our repair kit on is a 2011 328 coupe and this has the N51 engine. So the symptoms that you just had was the engine running rough, um, that high pitched sound that you were hearing was actually negative pressure in the crankcase vacuum, drawing air in through the seals making a high pitched sound kind of like a reed on a clarinet and, and similar instruments like that. And so um, other symptoms that you would have with that kind of failure is rough running, poor fuel economy, check engine light. Check engine light might have several different kinds of misfires including fuel, air, uh, mixture ratios being too lean, sometimes too rich but most of the time too lean. And, um, and, and sometimes the car will even stall when you come to a stop. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate how to replace this crankcase ventilation valve without replacing the entire cover and without removing the cover. So the common repair now that's approved is to replace the whole valve cover because the valve is not replaceable by itself by design. It's, it's manufactured together and if you, would, if you didn't already know it, this valve cover comes from BMW so it's quite expensive. It's about $500. Labor is about four to five hours of labor and also um, depending on the labor rate and where you go, range from $1,200 to about $1,700 to do this repair. So we're going to demonstrate the kit, how to use the tools in the kit, and uh, show you how to take a $1,200 to $1,700 repair and turn it into about a three dollars to $400 repair in a fraction of the time. So um, we're going to stop the video and I'm going to pull out all the parts and the tools in the kit and, and give you a demonstration. Okay, so this is the engine with the cover off. So some of the stuff that you're going to have to replace and remove is these coils, this harness. Move that out of the way. Take this cover off here, this cover off here, unbolt that, get these wires out of the way. You got six coils you gotta remove. You gotta flip this harness away to get access to the crankcase vent valve which is right there see this, this little fitting here so what we're going to do is we're going to pause the video remove all these components so you get a clearer look at what's going on and then we'll proceed with the retrofit and the removal of the valve Okay, so we have the coils and the electronic motor and the harness and all that stuff out of the way. And here's a picture of the valve by itself. It's kind of hard to see. We're gonna have we're gonna have uh, the valve cut off on a bench, but when you do this on the car, this is where you're gonna be located. You got these tabs here that have to be broken off with something like a pick, and then follow the line on this valve. And that's where you're going to cut. And uh, to take the, the tabs off, it's pretty easy. You just stick your, just like that. Come off really easy. They're really just fragile. Take all three off. Uh, follow the line when you're cutting. And, um, and that's it. So I'm going to pause the video again and cut this valve off. Job a lot easier. I'm going to be cutting at this angle because this is the angle that you're going to be cutting at when it's installed in the car because the fender is going to be here and the firewall is going to be on the other side. So I'm going to be cutting at this angle here. So follow this line. Once you start digging in and it has something to follow, then it gets a lot easier to cut. So what we'll want to do is slowly start making a line. 
and then it gets a lot easier. Probably the toughest part is getting a, a starting cut for the blade to ride in. Quick trick to make this easier to start a groove, you're going to put the wire into the groove like this. You're going to take your fingers and hold it into place. And you don't actually have to see where the groove is because you'll be able to feel it with your fingers. This is the fastest way to start the groove. And once you get started, the cutting process is pretty simple. So we just take it and we Again, just put it in the groove one more time about three or four passes like this and what you want to do is with the other hand kind of hold it in place but then kind of push it and feed it too One more time, get it here, wrap around, and now you can look and you see we got a groove. We don't have to hold it like this and try to work around it, we just line it up and let the blade do all the work. And since it's not going to hurt you by cutting you, it's completely safe. This is probably the most efficient way of starting the, the groove to get your cut as, as clean and straight as possible. Okay, well that's the end of the trick. And then once you, once you get about three, four, maybe even five turns on that, you'll have a nice deep groove, groove and then you can commence in cutting the entire valve off without worrying about it getting crooked where the blade's not going to wander out, then it gets easier. So we're going to cut it at this point. So you want to do it in a saw-like motion. Take your time. The 
like you're cutting and the blade gets stuck, don't pull harder to un unstuck it. Go back the other way or kind of pull it out. If it gets stuck, you don't want to pull harder. It's a pretty strong blade, but if you're a big guy or just a pretty strong person, you could snap this wire, so don't want to do that. Take your time. You stay in that line. We definitely want to stay in that line because if you stay in the line that's less kind of uh, that's a really smooth surface. You'll have less to use your little file to make it nice and flat and even. So that sound that you hear, the re regulating spring that's in there right now is getting cut, uh, which is going to happen. Can't, it's unavoidable. Right now, right there, the uh, my blade is kind of on. My blade has gotten stuck a little bit, so I'm just gonna feed it out, get it unstuck, get the blade back in there, and just take my time. As you can see, once you get really going, it's going to kind of cut through this, this plastic pretty fast. It's that. Boom. So there's the spring can't reuse it because it kind of gets messed up in the process. You'll notice that the spring that comes out of this originally does not look like our new ones. But our spring is designed to apply the same amount of pressure as the uh, manufacturer's spring. So we're just going to toss that away. There's the top. You can see the little cut right here in the diaphragm which is causing all these problems that which causes the lean mixture problems and misfires the whistling noises and all those symptoms that we all hate that cost us a lot of money. So what we're going to do is take our file, any edge that's not perfectly smooth, we're just going to file it, take a rag, wipe it clean, uh, or a shop vacuum, get it nice and clean with no oil, no debris, and then um, pretty easy to install the spring, new valve, and the retaining clip. So we're going to pause the video, clean this thing, and then show you what it looks like when it's all clean. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so this bracket here was removed during the earlier part of the video to have more clarity on where to cut, but typically this would stay on. And it's not an easy thing to do to take off while the valve cover is on the car. And this whole job is supposed to be made where you can cut this valve off while it's still attached to the engine. So in your case, this is going to be on there unless you want to remove it can remove it when it's on the car, it's just not easy to get to, but we put it back on so we can demonstrate. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the spring, the bottom part of this diaphragm fits right into there. The inside of this is all clean, so we're going to line that up, line that up. These grooves right here only go into this valve cover one certain way. You can't put it on any other way other than perfectly where it's supposed to go. So what we're going to do is line up the spring on the diaphragm. We're going to line it up down here so it sits in that groove. Get your get this thing lined up and then you push it on. Now this one went on pretty easy because I got it real clean. but. Um, what we wanted to do is have it line up exactly the way it was when we started cutting. So you can, as you can see, it looks just like the original, but obviously that's that's removed. But it's going to look like the original, and that's what we want. That's how you know we made a good straight cut. You don't want it kind of crooked and 
it's not straight because then you're going to have to file it down. You want a nice filed smooth surface. And then you take this clip. Since we removed these other clips, there needs to be a way to fasten this. So we incorporated this fastening clip, clip to go on the, the car. And all we do is this clip that's on here holds down the BMW cover. And there's a screw that goes right through into through the cover into this clip and locks everything in place. So all we do is we take this clip and we slide it into here. It's got a hole in it. And we pull up on this spring and pull it over the valve. It's spring metal, so it's going to put tension downward on, the, on this valve. And then what you do, you just line up the hole in the retaining clip with the hole that's with this clip here. And that's it. And then you put everything back. You put your ignition coils back, your wiring harness back, your valvetronic motor back, all that kind of stuff. And then um, you're done. That's pretty much it. Okay, there we are. There's the valve. I didn't, I didn't put the cover back on yet because I wanted you to see that the valve was on there and that this car is not whistling, it's not squealing like it was before. And so this is a completed repair. We're just going to put the covers on and the AC filter housing on and all that. And this car is complete, but obviously this is an effective repair that's going to save you guys a lot of money.